Um, so I'm really hoping that's going to work. And if not, you know, not everything's going to work right. I'm waiting for you to bust your knuckles. It has happened. Bam! Amazing how the more you work in the cold, it doesn't bother you. It's uh, 30, 30 degrees outside maybe. The shop's probably still hair warmer. Um, I can see my breath if I'm in certain areas. Can't see it now. Maybe not. Anyways, working on the gas line. So trying to get everything wrapped up before they spray foam. And this line coming through the wall right there, since that wall is going to be insulated, that's where I started. Uh, this pipe over here is just sitting there. It's not doing anything. Um, so I had to run. Well, I started off just coming through the wall and thinking that was good enough. And then I thought, well, shoot, how am I going to get everything to line up if I just don't go ahead and run it? Had to start over in the pump room where I had it stubbed out. It actually worked out pretty darn good. So up there, um, came out just above the floor joists, which I'd actually planned that because I really wanted to have the gas line hidden. But there's really no good way, well, I can't do it now until they spray anyways, for me to sheet that. So I can always do some sort of special cut if I really want to. I'll probably just leave it open. So that went over just, just about four feet and dropped down. The distance off that stiff back there was seven inches to the center of the pipe. And I needed to, on this end, be at five and a half inches. So the pipe actually is a little bit crooked as it goes over down to one and a half or five and a half inches. You can really see it there, how it starts to turn. I think I stayed pretty close to my seven inches until I got to the last 20 feet or so. And then right above me, I had to tee off there. It'll come over into the craft room. I just got done drilling my hole in the top plate. And then here's my pipe coming down. So this pipe isn't hooked up to anything. It's just there for reference. So that's a 10 foot pipe. And I got to put another two foot pipe below it, feed it through my hole and then tie that in. And then that will complete the uh, gas um, line for the craft room. So this is where the, the oven goes. And right now this is going to be an electric oven. Nally doesn't want gas in here because uh, when she's doing soaps and things like that, sometimes the gas can uh, be hazardous because it may catch your stuff on fire and it cooks too fast. Um, also when we're melting wax from the bees and things like that, that could also be an issue too. I told her she can only use it during the daytime in full sun so she's not sucking power down from the batteries. So getting pretty close. So got a lot to do. That vent up there is from the back side of the pellet stove and I've got to run duct work down through there right above there almost it's almost perfectly centered where it needs to be at i'm gonna have to go off to the left about a foot um, to hit the edge of the wall where the girls rooms are in fact those wires right there going up goes right into the wall and then there is the uh, uh, bend coming out so anyways i need to put my three taps into this valerie's room sydney's room's about there and then the master bedroom's over on this side. So what that's going to be for is that while the pellet stove is going, um, we can turn on our auxiliary fan. And that fan will um, pull air from around the firebox, um, not inside the, uh, or the stove, but just around it. And we'll suck it back through to the bedrooms to get air to the far side, heat to the far side of the house. This is going to be a straight shot. So I'm going to come off of that um, tap right right behind the stove and it's gonna shoot straight through. Um, so I'm really hoping that's gonna work. And if not, you know, not everything's gonna work right. Uh, what else? My Mr. Cool system came in. So this is a four ton, well actually it's a four ton or a five ton. There's a switch in there you, you flip and that changes it from a four to a five. Uh, these are my units. There's two 12Ks and two 9K units. Uh, so basically it's a one ton, a two one ton, and then two three quarter ton units. And so I've got those divided up and where they're gonna be sitting at. I've got to get this mount mounted outside. One of the other things I need to do is um, where all these lines come off down here for the different um, uh, units here. There's actually five, I only have four because if we ever need an extra one, 
we do plan on doing that uh, living room, center room addition. You know, Natalie wants to do it as soon as possible. I'm thinking it's probably going to be more like two years or so. Uh, but anyways, that gives us an extra port to tap into for that, that system. But I've got to drill my hole through the wall. My power lines come out of here and then uh, the con or the um, line sets come out of here. So I've got to have holes in my exterior walls for those before they foam. That's not going to be too big of a project. The boiler is sitting right here. That's a Christmas present. Those are Christmas lights. Boiler, dog food. Uh, the boiler, I have to get that hooked up still. Um, figure out how my penetration is going to go through the wall for that too. It's another task I've got to figure out. Hey, sorry if I noise in the background. Barry's drilling out a uh, vent for the, uh, for the fireplace. Vents up in the bedrooms. But um, I was going to show you here, working on the uh, gas line. So my gas line comes through here, but my hole is a little bit off. It needs to be about where this line is. So. If you're using a hole saw, of course you can't just stick it in there. There's no way to get that lined up. So what you do is drill a hole through a piece of scrap and then we'll line it up where we want it. Like so, and then I'll screw this in and this now becomes my, my guide. So you can see there I've got it drilled in here. And up there, just tacked into place. Now I can put the bit into the existing hole. There we go. Now I've got the hole that I need. And today we're working on cleaning everything up and out of here for the spray insulation. It's gonna happen in two days. I know we've been talking about that a lot but we have to get everything cleaned out of here. And then, once that's done, we have to do a deep cleaning on everything so that the insulation sticks properly because you don't want to have any dust and anything like that. So we have a lot of, a lot of debris from wood chips and wood shavings and things like that, especially from drilling all the holes, with electrical, the plumbing, things like that. Tim and Dad are scrambling to get the last of everything done. We keep thinking of, oh no, we've got this to do. Oh no, we've got this to do. We forgot about adding that. And like we were watching a show last night and like, oh no, we haven't done the internet cable yet. So we've got to run that too. The girls and I are working on getting everything cleaned up. We've hauled a lot of wood and everything out to the barns. Thank goodness we have the barn to be, or the barns rather, to be able to put wood in. And as well as the sheds, trying to move stuff around, get everything out of here. The garage is pretty full. I guess I can walk over there. We got our heating and air systems that we had to move They're right over here. This part will actually be protected so we can move things there. But we had to move the tables out. This was pretty full this morning, but getting it emptied out. Getting there. That's the project for today. Once we are done doing that, then we need to work on covering up all the windows. I think several things at once. These, this one's loose and that one's loose and that one's loose and that one. So when I turn it, they all turn each other until uh, they all tighten up. So instead of tightening this one, then that one, and that one, I can just do it all one time. I'm waiting for you to bust your knuckles. Yeah. 